Thursday, February 7th, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Guys, in this video, we're going to start out down here in Antarctica, work our way up into the northern hemisphere just off the coast of Florida near Fort Lauderdale, and then I'm going to take you out to outer space where I filmed the moon and some planets about a week ago, put together a little video that I've been saving for a rainy day, and even though it's not raining, I'm going to share that video with you today. Right now we're here at foxnews.com, story dated today, published three hours ago. goes on to say an ominous hole almost the size of Manhattan discovered under Antarctic Glacier. A massive hole two-thirds the size of Manhattan is growing at the bottom of an Antarctic Glacier, and NASA scientists are concerned about the potential for rapid melting and decay. The huge cavity, which is approximately 1,000 feet deep, and about as tall as New York City's Chrysler Building is growing at the bottom of the Thwaites Glacier and is large enough to have once contained 14 billion tons of ice. And that's according to NASA. Most of that ice has melted over the last three years. Here's a look at that glacier on, actually this is Google Maps. There's part of the glacier there. Here's another part here. This is where it's located. I'm going to take you to the glacier on Google Maps and on Google Earth. Here it is on Google Maps. And for a little better perspective with regard to the rest of Antarctica, here it is on Google Earth. And this is the glacier here. And I know by comparison it doesn't look very big, but that's the size of Florida. And as we're going to read here in just a moment, this, if it were all to melt, would be responsible for 4% of the overall sea level rise globally. It's kind of hard to imagine. But the uh, cavity that they found is over here on this side somewhere. And when you zoom in on Google Earth, for some reason, you can't really get all of the ice sheet. You can get some of it. I can get a little section here, a little bit down here, and a small section up here. But it's kind of hit and miss here on, on uh, Google Earth, especially at this location. I don't know why. Normally, you can see most of that stuff. But there's the glacier there. It's the size of Florida. The section that's melting underneath is about the size of Manhattan, New York. goes on to say it's 1,000 feet tall, the size of the Chrysler Building. We've suspected for years that it's not tightly attached to the bedrock beneath it. Scientists captured the cavity with the help of radar on its Operation Ice Bridge, which began back in 2010, and studies uh, links between the climate and conditions at the Earth's polar regions. The researchers also reportedly used data from Italian and German spaceborne radars. Here's a still clip from the loop, the radar loop, that captured this cavity right here, which is on the western edge of the glacier that I just showed you on Google Earth and on Google Maps. They go on to say the size of the cavity underneath the glacier plays an important role in melting. As more heat and water get under the glacier, the faster it melts. According to NASA, the entire glacier, which is the size of Florida, is responsible for about 4% of global sea level rise and holds enough ice to raise the world's oceans by a little over 2 feet. Pretty incredible. A recent study showed that ice in Antarctica is melting six times faster than it did back in the 1980s, including in areas that were previously thought to be stable. So interesting article here from foxnews.com that I will post down below in the description box. Now we're going to hop up into the northern hemisphere just off the coast of Florida near Fort Lauderdale. Story from the SunSentinel.com goes on to say, Is it a sign a huge wooden cross washes ashore on Fort Lauderdale Beach? And this occurred over the past weekend. And people that saw this thing washed up were very drawn to it. You don't normally see things like this wash up along the beach. I mean, you'll see shipwrecks. You'll see random pieces of unknown debris that, that just simply can't be identified. Sometimes you'll see sea creatures, but I can't recall ever seeing a cross. And that's exactly what it is. People were taking pictures when it came ashore. In fact, here's a look at it when it was coming ashore. You can see a gentleman here taking a picture. A group brought this thing clear up near this hotel so it wouldn't wash back out to shore. And they were looking at it, taking pictures. And this is a close-up of the lower part of the cross. And that's exactly what it is. It's a man-made cross, no doubt about it. 
You can see there's the lag bolts that hold it together. It was intelligently designed. It's not just some random piece of driftwood. That's a definite cross. When I first saw this article, I thought of Hurricane Irma. Hurricane Irma, this is the path of Hurricane Irma back in September of 2017. And it went through the Caribbean and Caribbean islands and was a very destructive hurricane. And I thought maybe this was a side effect from Hurricane Irma. And it took a year and a half for it to reach the shores of Florida. But I'm not so sure. After looking at this thing up close, and you can see there's a lot of uh, what they call barnacles. These are little sea creatures that are attached to this structure, this cross. And it's all over this thing from top to bottom. So it looks like to me that it's been underwater for quite some time, quite possibly longer than 18 months. Hurricane Irma went through the Caribbean back in September of 2017. I suppose it could have been um, from Irma, but I don't know. And I'm not sure that anybody else knows at this point in time. Somebody can probably look at this and identify it, quite possibly find a date somewhere on it or a location where it once stood. And it could probably easily be tracked back to an island that it came from, if in fact it was from Hurricane Irma. But I don't know. That was just a, a first guess that I saw, thought of when I saw that cross. But interesting find. You don't normally see perfectly intact crosses wash up ashore along any beach, let alone here in Fort Lauderdale. So kind of cool. People were very intrigued by it, out taking pictures of this unique find. And as far as I know, it's still behind this hotel in Florida as I do this video near Fort Lauderdale. And finally, here's a little video that I made back on January 31st. It's of Venus, the Moon, and Jupiter in the eastern sky around 6 a.m. And I got some close-ups of it. This is a star map, and it does show our planet Venus, Moon, Jupiter are, in fact, in that location. So I zoom in, get some close-ups of Venus. It was a really clear morning. And the, I want to say it was a 17% uh, moon, crescent moon. Very clear morning. Go in real tight here on Venus. And that was about as close as I could go. I wasn't using the telescope. This is just with the, the camera on a tripod. Using a Canon Rebel T2i. Zoom in tight on the moon. I want to say it was a 17%. But it was a perfect morning for telescopes, for cameras. Absolutely ideal. Here's a look at the crescent moon inverted in negative format. Nothing unusual here. Just interesting. I always find it interesting when the the moon and a planet get within about a degree and a half of each other. Sometimes you'll see them even closer than that. This here is not quite a degree. I think it's closer to two degrees. But here is a different format with a little less light. This is a lot of light. A little longer exposure. This was a shorter exposure. And another long exposure. But conditions were very good for viewing the sky, objects in the sky, unlike the night of the eclipse when we had clouds and viewing conditions were absolutely deplorable. This morning, which was around 6 a.m. before sunrise in the eastern sky. Absolutely perfect for viewing the stars, moon, and the planets. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day, and be safe out there.